The main idea with this farmhouse style kitchen table was to maintain the chunky look of the 8 foot 2 by 12 oak boards I had. However, the table needed to have a removable leaf at either end, and also 12 inches is wider than I could fit in my 10 inch jointer and planer. So before I could build the top, there was some cutting to do. First, I cut the 8 foot boards into a 2 foot board, 4 foot board, and 2 foot board in sequence, so that when the leaves are installed, the grain will be continuous. I initially used my circular saw, but it couldn't cut deep enough to cut it in a single pass, and it was a little underpowered, so instead I used the mitre gauge on the table saw. A crosscut sled would have been much easier though. If you get confused about what cut I'm making, the diagram in the corner may help, especially later when it gets more complicated. Throughout the process, I had all the pieces laid out on the floor in position, so I could keep track of them and maintain grain continuity. To get the boards through the planer, I ripped each piece in half. At first I tried this in one pass, but the table saw didn't like that, so instead I made two passes. Even so, by the last board the table saw actually cut out and refused to start because it was overheating. Before each board is ripped, I mark the face with a reference triangle to make it easier when I glue them back together. I jointed one face and made the same number of passes on each half of the board so that the grain matched. I then planed down the other face in multiple sessions until I reached 40mm thickness. A tip to reduce snipe when you're planing multiple pieces to the same thickness is to pass them through end to end as if they were one board. This way you only get snipe on the start of the first board and the end of the last board. This is important because I don't want to remove much material from the forefoot boards because otherwise there'll be a noticeable difference between the grain on the main section of the table and the grain on the leaves. Once they were planed, I cut both edges square and parallel at the table saw, removing as little material as possible, partly to make the join seamless between the two halves, but also because I didn't have much room to play with. Having removed the bare minimum from all boards to get the edges square, I ended up with a final width of 802mm, which is only 2mm to spare. I could then glue up all of the half boards back into whole boards. At this point, I wasn't too fussed about the ends lining up, I just wanted the best grain match between the two halves. Once the glue had dried, I cut the ends flush with the mitre gauge. I then marked out the final length I wanted and drew a square line on the top and front face. Here's a neat tip I saw in someone's video, I wish I could remember who, for cutting exactly to your line. Take a steel rule and line it up with a tooth at the front and back of your blade. If it's an alternating bevel blade, then make sure to line up the two teeth pointing towards the side that you want to keep. Then just make a mark on your insert plate or table. If you line your pencil line on your work up with this mark, it will cut right to the line. Even so, I double check the length once I've made the cut. Here's how the table looks with all the boards together and the two leaves. Finally, it's time to glue up the whole tabletop. Now that I have cut the boards to length, it's important to make sure that the ends line up, as I can't cross cut the entire top with the mitre gauge, it's just too wide. After spreading glue on the first edge, I put it in place, so that when I come to clamp up, the glue won't be so slippery as it will have started to bond. This makes it easier to make fine adjustments and ensure that the ends line up. I'm using four clamps for the glue up, two below and two above, in order to apply even clamping pressure and try to prevent any bow developing. Once it is clamped, I spread sawdust over all the joins to clean up the squeeze out and also to fill any small voids to make a more seamless join. Here you can see the whole top glued up and you can see that the three boards went back together pretty seamlessly. Looking at the end grain, I alternated the grain direction so the outer boards cut the opposite way to the middle. This helps reduce warping in the board over time. Now, in the design for the table, the leaves will be stored underneath the tabletop, but since they are both 40mm thick and will be stacked one on top of the other, I wanted to recess them up into the underside of the tabletop to reduce the depth of the apron rail. I used fences around the side of the tabletop so that I could maintain an area of full thickness around the edge, and then I just made multiple passes in a circular motion with the router to remove the material. And here is the aftermath. It generated a lot of sawdust. Initially, the top weighed 30 kilos, but by the end it only weighed 15. To add some strength to the top, I've installed some angle iron trim underneath. You may have noticed the ugly mess that the router left. Unfortunately the depth stop wasn't as solid as I thought and it kept slipping. I didn't notice this because of the amount of sawdust covering the tabletop, but I didn't want to hollow the whole area down to the low spots because it had become too thin and weak. To fix the angle iron in place, I drilled oversized holes and used big headed screws to allow for wood movement. Then to cover up the mess and the angle iron, I'll make some oak trim that goes over the angle iron and holds in place a hardboard panel that is painted white. I went with hardboard as it was only 3mm thick and I didn't want to lose too much depth 
otherwise that would defeat the point of hollowing it out in the first place. The trim is made up of a 35mm wide top piece which covers the bottom of the angle iron and holds the hardboard. There's also a 3mm thick strip at the bottom which contacts the underside of the table. Here's how the whole lot goes together. Since the inside corner of angle iron is rounded over, I cut a bevel on one side of the trim so that it could sit right up against the upright face. I used the mitre gauge to put a 45 degree mitre on both ends of the trim pieces. With it dry fitted, the mitres fit nicely, but as you can see the trim doesn't sit flat with the hardboard because it hits the screw heads in the angle iron. I mark the screw locations, then make some shallow holes in the back side of the trim to sit over the screws. I also drilled oversized holes to fit the trim in place with screws. And here's the final tabletop, albeit upside down still. Let me know what you think. In the next part, I'll be turning the legs and making the base.